You know what kind of man Abu Bakr was? He wasn't a big guy, but he had a big heart. Today we have many big guys. The big guys do it for the wrong reason. And we don't have enough people who have big enough heart for the truth. And that's the problem. We have enough sellouts. We have enough people, you know, who will go and beat up some other innocent person or somebody who's weaker than them. But will they ever do anything strong for the sake of Allah? They won't because it, because it dents their macho-ness. That's what it is. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke about the strong man. He said the strong man is the one who can control his anger. Oh, so he who can punch out somebody's lights. And Abu Bakr radiallahu you know what kind of man he was? Aisha radiallahu narrates, he was thin. He was so thin that his trousers would not remain around his waist. Subhanallah, he was so thin that his eyes had sunk in. That you could see the, the bones in his fingers, they would protrude because he was so thin. And when he would walk, he didn't walk with a step. He didn't walk with an attitude. He actually walked with a stoop. But they say Abu Bakr was the weakest in body. But when it came to the command of Allah, he was the strongest. When you look at macho men and you make them your role models, then why don't you compare them with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fought with people for what? Not to beat people up, to bring them closer to Allah. In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was a man called Ruqana. And Ruqana was the undisputed wrestler of his time. In those days, Umar ibn Khattab and Khalid ibn Walid were wrestlers, but nobody had ever defeated Ruqana. And upon occasion, he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Oh Muhammad, if you beat me, I will embrace Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got happy. He got elated. He said, will you actually embrace Islam if I beat you? He said, yes. And he grabbed Ruqana and he floored him. And Ruqana had never been floored before that day. And he stood up and he gave it the usual. Oh, I want looking. You know, my foot slipped. But the ulama mentioned, look at this. The Prophet ﷺ was ready. Subhanallah. He was ready to fight with people to bring him to the haqq. Compare that with us. You know, this sick concept of macho man that we have nowadays. This sick concept that we have. You know, somebody who can make somebody an orphan, somebody who can push drugs, who can carry a piece. He's our role model for our youngsters. Why? The reason is because we have failed to make, give them alternative role models. If you had just told your child about Khalid bin Walid before they slept, they would have looked up to the local drug dealer. If you had given them examples of Abdullah ibn Mubarak, they would have looked at other people. But did we do that? No. We told them Cinderella. That's what we told them about. And Ruqana stood up again and he said, give me another chance. And the Prophet wasallam grabbed him and he dicked him again. And Ruqana was shocked. That never happened to him before. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Ruqana, if you hang around with me, I will show you greater things than me battering you. And Ruqana said, What could be more greater than this? And the Prophet ﷺ indicated toward the tree, and the tree ripped through the earth, and it stood in front of the Prophet ﷺ, and it bore witness that there is no God but Allah, and you are his messenger. And the Prophet ﷺ turned to Ruqana and he said, Oh Ruqana, I told you, hang around with me and I will show you things which are greater than me battering you. But this was the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And the, and the examples go on and on. We live in a, a shallow society where you, know, you judge people by how good looking you are. So you got plenty of hair. Then you might become prime minister. That's where William Hague lost out. You know, you're good looking. But good look, uh, you know, only skin deep. But if that is what you're looking at, then is there anybody looks who could compare with the looks of the Prophet ﷺ? Jabir radiallahu anhu mentioned, I saw the Prophet ﷺ on the night of a full moon. And I looked at the face of the Prophet ﷺ and I looked at the full moon. 
and I looked at the face of the Prophet sallallahu and then I looked at the full moon. And then I looked at his face again, and I looked at the full moon. He said, I swear by Allah, the face of the Prophet sallallahu was more radiant and more beautiful than the full moon. Do you know what this story, tell your children this story tonight, of Zulaikha is. Zulaikha was the wife of the Aziz. She was an honorable woman, and she fell in love with Yusuf alayhi salatu salam, who was a slave. And the news spread around that she was infatuated with this slave. So the other honorable women started saying, you know, how did she, how did she fall in love with him? Let me put it in a context that you can understand it. How did Raja Saab's daughter fall in love with so and so? And I won't mention, how did Raja Saab's daughter fall in love with him? So she gathered all the women and she gave them an apple and she said cut the apple and while they were cutting the apple she told Yusuf salam, to walk past the Prophet salam, said Yusuf salam, was given half of the beauty of humanity and when he walked past they saw his beauty they were so immersed in his beauty whilst they were cutting the apple they cut through their fingers and they did not even feel the pain Aisha radiallahu anha mentions, if the women of Zulaikha had seen my Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they would have cut their hearts and felt no pain.